What's up ladies and gentlemen, welcome to level 6 of the Terran campaign in StarCraft Brood War the Remastered version and we get introduced to a new Terran unit called the Valkyrie. An incredibly strong air unit might not seem like it due to the damage but it's 6 per rocket and as you can see they make short work of clumped up units like Mutalisks. So uh, definitely not a flyer to underestimate if you have a large army of these you quickly take care of the majority of um, air based units. That includes masses of carriers and battle cruisers as well. Unfortunately you need a lot of them in order for them to be effective and when it comes to single target fighting they're not as good. So yeah, they do have their weaknesses. Anyways, as for this level, we are going up mostly against the Protoss in this level. And um, we are going to go for the more... Um, melee... Oh, not melee. You're me with melee. Uh, uh, the infantry based approach. So how that is pretty much gonna work is we are just going to make lots of marines and medics and maybe a couple of fire bats and then uh yeah just just take on the protoss with that oh yeah and of course a couple of siege tanks let's not forget about the siege tanks other than that we're not even gonna bother much with making more valkyries or anything on that line in all honesty um these that we have over here are more than enough we don't need others so uh as for for like the starport we can just build it up there these siege tanks here on the top side we can bring down they're not gonna be as needed on the top side uh, the attacks that we will be experiencing are also not gonna be that much so what we can do is just for defensive reasons place the barracks and the factory here on the front side give us a little bit more space to let our units mine Ah, oh, this one was blocked. Nice. And, um, yeah. Just, just build a couple of defenses. And build enough units to go and take down the process afterwards. Not a big deal, really. So the main upgrades that we are going to be focusing on is marine infantry-based upgrades. Maybe, a, maybe, like, the siege tank's damage upgrade. But other than that, yeah not as major or hectic as the previous level that is for sure now um this this level is gonna have a bit of a slow start though reason being because um we only have one base for the time being the second base that we're gonna be claiming is here not too far away from us on the northwestern side and to get to that base we're gonna need a little bit more than what we have right now and then uh, just knock down a couple of buildings. Once we start attacking those buildings, however, the Protoss is going to come for us with a couple of their units to try and defend. And uh, that's the reason why it's going to take just a little bit of time to get there, because we just need more, a little bit more units than what we currently have. The warp gate at the center of the Protoss encampment has been activated. Our sensors show that the gate's energies are inciting the Zerg to attack. Alright, so um, there's a big Zerg base here on the far right side and the far northern side. And uh, taking taking care of those is fortunately not going to be needed. All we need to do is destroy the command center here on the top side. So that's going to be our primary focus for the entirety of this level. As for attacks from the Zerg, just build a couple of missile turrets here in your base. Uh, just so that you can defend any... Mutalisks, mutalisk attacks that might come through for the most part you're not really gonna have to worry about that due to our valkyries but once we leave the area then you kind of want to have a couple of units or uh, defensive structures to just help you out against any attacks that come through now um there might be defilers scattered on certain areas of the map so definitely be careful of that if i have it correctly there's a defiler over here Okay, well generally what happens if you build your, your buildings up here, there will be a defiler that tries to use plague on them, so um, definitely be careful. Fortunately, science vessels are a hard counter for units like that because you just cast your irradiate ability on them and it will gradually kill them over time. Like one hit, 
and you can move away. Like they're down for pretty much. So like I said, no need to really worry about a massive amount of defenses. One bunker with a couple of siege tanks over here is enough. And uh, once we take that base over there, we'll build a couple of defenses over there as well. Hey. Oh yeah, of course. Gas yes, is lacking. Very, very slow. We should definitely repair our Valkyries once we get the chance. Right now, it's... The resources are not really on our side. Okay, plus one. It's now halfway done. So, yeah. Okay. Let's start preparing our Valkyries. While the gas is coming in so nicely and so gradually. Minerals are coming in nicely. Four to six medics are needed for the assault that we plan on making. And of course that upgrade is also equally important. Okay. Ah, there we go. Exactly what I was talking about. Just like an in case of emergency situation. Both two muscle turrets and the rest is taken care of. Didn't I? I was just about to say, a weird situation. So yeah, um, wasn't really needed to send in our Valkyries, which just means that we have to repair them afterwards as well, and I wasn't in the mood for something like that. Like I mentioned, medics do repair your, your SEVs, so you can definitely make use of that. Okay, healed. Repaired, 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 and one more repaired. All right, so our Valkyries are looking good. Siege tank will be on number two. Ah, definitely repair that one too. Okay. Scanner sweep is not really needed, but it's always a nice to have. And of course, maybe build some missile turrets here as well. Again, rather be safe than sorry. Besides, it doesn't cost that much to make missile turrets. Okay, now that um, yeah, okay. So let's let's definitely get our science facility so that we can start with the next batch of upgrades immediately. We'll start worrying about the armory later on. It's not that important right now. We are going to be preparing ourselves for the for the next attack, anyways. Okay, so um, it will be a good idea to get at least one or leave one of our siege tanks behind once we go out. You can leave all three if you really want to, but in all honesty, it's it's just going to make the process a whole lot quicker. So just just take them all. Now that we have this building, we can just send it here to the lower side. Get stem packs before we even think about going out to assault him. And get the supply up and running for sure. Two more marines and we should pretty much be ready to get going. All right. So um, the defenses that they have over there is really not that much, but uh, the thing that I'm more concerned about is the attack that comes afterwards. So send in our marines first, so that they can soak up the majority of the damage. Knock down that baby over there. And build replacement marines. So they should be coming pretty, pretty soon. Place our marines here on the bottom side. Here they come. Just as I expected they would. 
Don't worry too much about the brown zords though, they're not gonna be a big threat for us. Yeah, just start building this building, get a head start, we can always just uh, relocate it to a different position. Uh, unnecessary loss. Okay. Let's try not to lose our marines. If we can help it. Oh. oh well. That does happen. So we are gonna be building maybe one or two bunkers right here. Let's just get these siege tanks out of the way. And these siege tanks we're gonna use to fortify the position here on the northern side, which... Um, uh, here on the northern side, because the Zerg is definitely gonna try and give us a hard time here as well. So, uh, block it off with supply depots, and then a couple of bunkers afterwards, so yeah. Pull these up. Missile turrets, just the same old, same old stuff that we usually do. Just relocate this a little bit closer to that location over there. And from here on out, just get these defenses up and running. Then we are ready to start making a large amount of these barracks that we are then going to use to gradually hammer down on the, the Protoss bases. Okay, we need to get this base saturated ASAP for sure. And get this area blocked as well. The sooner we get that up and running, the better. Yeah, I would say this level is about halfway done now. Believe it or not, but it's the truth. From here on out, uh, once we we're gonna build four barracks in this area over here. It's a very good location for us. And then after that, it's just gonna be lots and lots of marines, medics, a couple of siege tanks, and uh, yeah, just keep that up and running until we have enough to start laying siege to their bases. And then, yeah, victory, victory is nearing. Okay, we might get some attacks from their defilers, which is why I recommend maybe placing the siege tanks a little bit closer. Uh, usually you wouldn't want to do this because of their uh, defilers, but because of the, uh, oh no, not the defiler, sorry, because of their hydralisks. Now, um, our defenses are going to be more than strong enough in order to deal with anything like that that they say in our way, so yeah. No need, no need to worry about that. Our defenses are looking great. Ooh, man. Ooh. Wow. Well, that came out of the blue. Anyways, that was that was perfectly fine. Luckily, we had an extra siege tank over there. We can start by making more marines. Maybe send down these medics to go help and support them. Yeah, we can use these Valkyries to take it down. Okay. No. I'm a strange player, I know. Okay. That guy out of the way. We don't need these anymore. We really want to. We can make battle cruisers, but I feel that it's an un a very unnecessary unit for this level. Defenses are good. Defenses are solid. Let's start getting those barracks up and running. Okay. All right. There we go. And keep on making supply depots. Uh, they are going to be very much needed. There's a base located over here as well if you want to get a third base. 
But generally at this stage, it's not going to be as needed uh, because we are primarily focusing on making Marines. That is going to mean that um, our units are not going to be as expensive. So yeah, no, no need to really worry about something like that. Let's see, five, six, seven, and eight. However, keep on making a couple of ACVs to get this base fully saturated. Okay. I mean, yeah, there we go. We, we are making a bunch of marines and it's not really costing that much to begin with. We actually forgot about the armory. Or, not we, I forgot about the armory. So, uh, siege tanks are not gonna be as effective as they can be, but they still hit pretty hard, so I'm not too concerned, to be honest. I think that they will do just fine and upgrade it. Okay. Okay, so with these siege tanks over here, you know, with, with this line that we have over here, the siege tanks are not gonna be as needed for this specific area. As you can see, the Protoss don't frequently attack us, so um, we're gonna position our siege tanks over here and start laying the hammer on them. See about that armory. Yes. We'll at least get plus one damage done. At least. Oh, look, here. look at that. There is an observer here. Yeah, the Zerg also attacked Protoss. In case you didn't know, that does happen. Remember to keep on moving your rally points, keep on making units. You can just max this out the whole time from here on out. You can use these ACVs to repair your siege tanks. Uh, things are generally easy from here on out. You can get the armor upgrade. It's, it's really a cakewalk from here on out. Try not to just hand your units over for free though, but yeah, take walk. Be careful of things like Psionic Storm, that can still be a bit of a problem if you get hit directly by it. But other than that, there is, um, once we take this little base over here, get that, get that, get that, and that, where are those SUVs, there we go. Uh -huh. So yeah, generally if you get a direct hit from something like Psionic Storm, you, you could lose all of these rings. So you, you don't want something like that to happen, of course. Position your units over here as close as you possibly can. Uh, the Protoss will try to come and save these buildings, but it's gonna be futile. We just have too many marines. Yes. Knock them down quickly. Before they get enough. Yeah, there we go. So we don't have to clear out everything here necessarily. We just need to knock down the pylons and then everything here is pretty much useless. So then we're not going to be facing any silly attacks from the side. Keep on making those units. And these units over here, we can just send them in to gain some ground. Honestly, see if we can get a decent foothold over here. There we go. Sacrifice all of those marines. It's perfectly fine if we do that. I mean, we are we are gonna be making a bunch more anyways. Let's see which tank? Uh, we just lost that one. Oh man. Anyways, keep on making those units. I actually forgot about this. Completely forgot about this. There we go. Maxed out. 
moving forward. And this is why the siege tanks are also so important in a level like this. For in case you are concerned about getting hit by something like Psionic Storm, um, the siege tanks do really well with quelling something like that. So yeah, it's the siege tank is is a really really cool unit for various reasons. Okay. I forgot that we still have those units. Now, um, we are going to be facing off against Archons. So, the Siege Tanks do really well in taking care of those. But more importantly are uh, the Science Vessels with their EMP ability. That EMP ability is really a devastating thing for the Protoss. Um, why? Because it knocks down all of their shields. And that, as you can imagine, can be pretty bothersome. Especially for a unit like an Archon. So, just position our siege tanks right over here. Good little location for us. We will move them closer as need be. Get our science vessel closer, and then you will see exactly what I'm talking about when I mean a direct EMP hit. Oh, they have a lot? Really? Well, they're all gonna be out of shields. Well, one of them is going to be out of shields. So yeah, not not a not a nice position to be in when you have um, archons. As you can see, we are pretty much overrunning them with the army that we've got. It's no massive micromanagement needed. Just a click with a bunch of medics, and yeah. Mission accomplished. We didn't even get all of our upgrades. Nothing. Okay. Just focus fire that thing. In, in fact, just get rid of the photon cannon first. Then focus fire. And mission accomplished. Alright, so there we have it ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of level 6 of the Terran campaign in StarCraft Brood War. As you can see, not really an intense level, it just takes a little bit of time to get things up and running. I suppose you could do it even faster than this, but I generally like to go for the solid approach, especially in the campaigns. Um, of course, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. If your friends would like to learn some more about StarCraft Brood War, and stay tuned for level 7, which is one of the dungeon levels of StarCraft, which will be followed by the final mission for the Terran campaign. And definitely stay tuned. I will see you next time. <laughs>